two centered compound curves occur when two simple curves are placed back to back. The most common locations for these are loop ramps. So exiting or entering a freeway type facility is a common place to have a two center compound curve. And this is really a compromise between uh, having a safe entry or exit ramp and not taking as much right of way with a smaller radius. So as you see in this, in this image, as vehicles exit the interstate facility, there's a larger radius, which then gets smaller as the vehicles approach the cross street and uh, are ready to interact with a signalized intersection. So looking at, at these potential radius values, as vehicles again exit off the interstate, there's going to be a large radius, and then you can see a smaller radius there at the end of that loop. Uh, looking at those just a little bit differently with just the arcs, so the arc coming off of the interstate has a larger radius compared to that smaller radius there as we uh, approach the cross street. And again, that's that balancing act between safety and minimizing the amount of land that's needed for that loop. So when we look at two center compound curves, there are two key equations for solving these curves. One is solving for T sub A, and the other solving for T sub B. So T sub A is the tangent length on the side of the PI that has the longer radius curve, and T sub B is the tangent on the side of the PI with the smaller radius curve. R1 in these equations represents the longer radius of the two curves, and R2 is the shorter radius of the two curves. So the subscripts 1 and 2 are very important, denoting the larger and smaller radius curves. Delta 1 is the deflection angle for the larger curve, and delta 2 is the deflection angle for the smaller radius curve, where I is the intersecting angle for the compound curve, where I is equal to each of the incremental deflection angles, delta 1 plus delta 2. Calculating T sub A and T sub B are common sources of error, so I highly recommend solving these incrementally, so solving within each set of parentheses uh, to reach a final value. So T sub A is equal to R2 minus R1 times the cosine of the intersecting angle plus R1 minus R2 multiplied by the cosine of delta 2 all divided by the sine of the intersecting angle. And T sub B is R1 minus R2 times the cosine of the intersecting angle minus R1 minus R2 multiplied by cosine of delta 1 all divided by the sine of the intersecting angle. And in most cases, all you're looking for is the tangent length between the PI and the PC. So usually you will only need to solve for either T sub A or T sub B if you're looking to solve for the stationing along the curve. So if you're given the PI station, you'll need to determine the appropriate tangent between the PI and the PC, calculate that tangent length, whether it's TA or TB, Subtract that from the PI to get the PC, and then add each of the appropriate lengths along the curve to reach the PT station. So taking a look back at our two centered compound curves, in this first example we have the larger, the larger radius curve comes first or comes closest to the PC. So in that case, T sub A is the tangent length between the PI and the PC and the one that we're of most interest if we're solving for the stationing. So we're going to start at the PI station if that's what we're given. We'll subtract off T sub A to reach the PC to determine the PC station. We'll add the length of the first curve, the larger radius curve, to reach the PCC, the point of compound curvature. And then we'll add the second curve's length L2 to reach the PT. In the other case, we have the larger curve second, or the larger curve is now closer to the PT. 
So in this instance, T sub B is the tangent length of interest. So if we were looking for stationing and we're starting with the point of intersection station, we're going to subtract off T sub B to reach the PC. Then we'll add the length of curve 2, so L2, to reach the PCC. And then we'll add L1 to reach the PT. And again, it's important to remember the nomenclature. The subscript 1 is always used to represent the larger radius curve. Subscript 2 is the smaller radius curve of the two. And th those remain in place regardless of which situation you have. So it's important to know whether or not you need to solve for T sub A, which you will solve for if the larger curve is first, or T sub B, which you'll solve for if the larger radius curve is second.